Did you know that the way you handle stress and challenges can determine the quality of your entire life? Every day, life throws curveballs, unexpected delays, tough conversations, or overwhelming workloads. And while most people let these moments take control of their emotions, there's a better way. Imagine staying calm when chaos erupts, turning obstacles into opportunities, and finding clarity in moments of pressure. If you've ever felt like stress is running your life, this video is for you. From learning to pause before reacting to mastering ancient stoic practices like negative visualization and breathing techniques, we'll uncover powerful strategies to transform your mindset. These aren't just philosophies, they're practical tools used by leaders, thinkers and high achievers for centuries. So, if you want to regain control, stay calm in any storm and unlock a deeper sense of peace, stay with me. The methods we're about to explore can change how you navigate challenges forever. Let's dive in. Number 1. Focus only on what you can control. Picture this, it's a crisp morning. The world feels alive with possibilities, and for a fleeting moment, everything feels manageable. You sip your coffee, watch the sun inch higher, and feel a rare sense of clarity. It's a comforting illusion until reality strikes. An unexpected phone call disrupts your plans. Someone's comment at work stings. Traffic tests your patience, you start to feel the frustration build, and you wonder, why is it so hard to stay calm? Here's the truth we often focus on things outside our control. The weather, other people's opinions, the economy. These are forces we can't dictate. Yet, we let them dominate our mental space, leaving us exhausted and powerless. Stoic philosophy offers a liberating solution. Focus only on what you can control. Your actions, your responses, and your mindset, these are your domains of power. Think about how much energy we waste trying to manipulate the uncontrollable. Remember a time when you tried to change someone's mind about something trivial, only to end up frustrated? Perhaps it was during a family gathering when political opinions clashed. Despite your best arguments, nothing changed. Instead, the conversation left you drained. Now consider the flip side. Imagine channeling that energy into things you can control, like your ability to stay calm, to respond with grace, or to walk away when needed. When you focus on your internal world, you reclaim your power. You start seeing external chaos as just noise, unable to disturb your inner peace. It's curious, isn't it? The simplicity of this idea almost makes it feel like a hidden secret. How much lighter would life feel if we stopped carrying the weight of the world's unpredictability? Number 2. Reframe stress as an opportunity. Think about the last time you felt truly alive. Maybe it was a tough workout where your muscles burned, but your spirit soared. Maybe it was a presentation at work that pushed you out of your comfort zone, but left you proud. Stress isn't always the villain we make it out to be. Sometimes, it's the spark that fuels growth. Stress gets a bad rap. We're told to avoid it, manage it, or eliminate it altogether. But what if stress is more than just a burden? What if it's an invitation to rise to the occasion? The Stoics believed that adversity is not just inevitable, it's essential. They saw challenges as opportunities to strengthen character, to test resilience, and to grow wiser. Think back to a moment in your life when you faced a challenge that felt insurmountable at the time. Maybe it was a heartbreak, a job loss, or a health scare. In the moment, it felt overwhelming. But looking back, you can see how it shaped you, how it forced you to grow in ways you never expected. Those moments of stress became turning points, teaching you lessons that no easy day ever could. Here's the curious part you don't need to wait for life to throw you a curveball. You can start reframing stress right now. The next time you're under pressure, remind yourself, this is my training ground. This is where I grow. 
instead of dreading the discomfort, lean into it. Stress isn't your enemy, it's your coach pushing you to become better. Number three, practice voluntary discomfort. Imagine a life where everything is easy. You have endless comfort, every luxury at your fingertips and not a single hardship to endure. Sounds like a dream, right? But here's the catch without challenges. Life starts to lose its flavor. Growth stagnates and even the sweetest pleasures become dull. Voluntary discomfort is a stoic practice that might seem counterintuitive in today's world of convenience. Why would anyone choose discomfort when we've worked so hard to avoid it? The answer lies in its transformative power. When you willingly expose yourself to discomfort, you build resilience. You teach your mind and body that you can handle hardship, that you are stronger than you think. Think about the last time you skipped a meal, not because you had to, but because you were busy or simply forgot. At first, hunger gnawed at you, but then something shifted. You realized you could push through. That small act of enduring discomfort gave you a sense of control over your body and mind. Now, imagine applying this intentionally. Try waking up earlier than usual, taking a cold shower or walking instead of driving. These small acts of discomfort might seem trivial, but they add up. They train you to face bigger challenges with grit and composure. Nostalgia might remind you of times when life wasn't as cushy, when you had to struggle, but those struggles made you who you are today. Maybe it was your first job, working long hours for little pay, or a time when you had to make do with less. Those experiences, though tough, built your character. Curiously, embracing discomfort in small, intentional ways prepares you for life's bigger battles. It's not about seeking pain, it's about choosing growth over comfort. So the next time you face a challenge, don't shy away. Step into it and discover just how resilient you can be. Number four, pause before reacting. Imagine this, you're driving home after a long day and someone cuts you off. Your heart races, anger bubbles up, and you're about to honk and shout. But then, just for a moment, you pause. You take a breath and decide it's not worth the energy. That brief pause is transformative, a small but powerful act of control. In life, most of our reactions are automatic. A harsh word from a colleague, a disappointing text, or even a long line at the store can trigger emotional responses before we've had time to think. These knee-jerk reactions often make situations worse. The Stoics, however, believed in cultivating the ability to pause and reflect before reacting. This practice is the key to maintaining inner peace. When we pause, we create space between the stimulus and our response. In that space lies our power to choose. Think about a time when you reacted impulsively and later regretted it. Perhaps it was during an argument with a loved one where words were exchanged in the heat of the moment. The damage, though unintended, lingered. Now imagine how different things could have been if you had taken a moment to pause, to think and to respond thoughtfully instead. Pausing before reacting is a skill, one that requires mindfulness and practice. Start small. When you feel the urge to respond immediately, whether it's to an email, a comment, or a situation, count to five. Use those seconds to assess the situation objectively. Is the reaction you're about to have helpful? Is it aligned with your values? This practice not only helps you stay calm, but also strengthens your relationships. People respect those who respond with thoughtfulness rather than impulsiveness. It's a curious realization the power of a pause is often underestimated, yet it has the potential to change the trajectory of interactions, big and small. Number five, embrace negative visualization. It might sound counterintuitive, but one of the most profound stoic practices involves imagining the worst case scenario 
Known as premeditatio malorum or negative visualization, this practice prepares you for life's inevitable challenges. At first glance, it might seem pessimistic, but in reality, it's one of the most empowering mental tools you can use. Imagine holding your favorite mug. You love the way it feels in your hands, the memories it carries. Now, imagine it falling and shattering into pieces. This visualization doesn't mean you want it to happen instead. It reminds you of the fragility of the things you cherish. When you mentally prepare for loss, you cultivate gratitude for what you have and resilience for when it's gone. Think back to moments when life blindsided you, a sudden breakup, the loss of a job, or an unforeseen health issue. The initial shock likely made the situation harder to process. Now imagine if you had already prepared your mind for such possibilities. The pain might still be there, but the shock would be less and your ability to cope would be stronger. Negative visualization doesn't mean dwelling on fears or catastrophizing. Instead, it's about grounding yourself in reality. Life is unpredictable and accepting that truth can free you from the illusion of control. Start practicing this by imagining minor inconveniences, a delay in your plans, a day without your phone, and think about how you'd handle them. Over time, you can expand this to larger challenges. It's curious, isn't it? By embracing what you fear, you diminish its power over you. This practice doesn't make life easier, but it does make you stronger. It transforms fear into preparedness and fragility into resilience. Number six, live in the present moment. Close your eyes and think about the last time you truly lived in the present. Maybe it was during a walk in nature where the rustle of leaves and the chirping of birds filled your senses. Or perhaps it was a conversation with a close friend where time seemed to stand still. These moments, though fleeting, are where life feels most vibrant and real. Yet how often do we let the present slip away? We replay past mistakes, worry about future uncertainties and multitask our way through the day. This constant mental chatter keeps us disconnected from the only moment that truly exists now. The Stoics emphasize the importance of living in the present moment. Marcus Aurelius wrote, Confine yourself to the present. Think of a time when you were lost in thought, only to realize later that you missed something beautiful, a sunset, a child's laughter, or a kind gesture. These moments, once gone, cannot be reclaimed. But when we anchor ourselves in the present, life becomes richer, fuller. Living in the present doesn't mean ignoring the past or future. It means not letting them overshadow the now. Try this the next time you're doing something mundane, like washing dishes or walking to your car. Focus entirely on the experience. Notice the feel of the water, the rhythm of your steps, the sensations around you. It's curious how much life opens up when you start paying attention. The present moment is a gift, one that too often goes unnoticed. By choosing to live here and now, you unlock a depth of experience that no amount of planning or reminiscing can offer. Number seven, use breathing techniques to regain. Calm. Think about the last time you felt overwhelmed. Maybe it was during a tight deadline, an argument or a moment of uncertainty. Your heart raced, your breath quickened and your mind spiraled. In such moments, it can feel like you're losing control. But here's a secret, your breath is the key to regaining it. Breathing is something we do every moment of our lives, yet we rarely pay attention to it. The Stoics understood the power of the breath. They knew that by controlling it, you could influence your state of mind. Modern science supports this ancient wisdom, showing how deep, intentional breathing activates the parasympathetic nervous system, calming the body and mind. Imagine a stormy sea, waves crashing, winds howling. Now picture the surface of that sea calming, the waves settling into gentle ripples. 
This is what happens when you use your breath to calm your inner storm. Techniques like diaphragmatic breathing, box breathing, or the 478 method can work wonders. Think back to a time when you instinctively took a deep breath to steady yourself, perhaps before giving a speech, answering a tough question, or stepping into an unfamiliar situation. That breath grounded you, bringing clarity and focus when you needed it most. Here's a simple exercise to try inhale deeply for four seconds, hold your breath for four seconds, and exhale slowly for eight seconds. Repeat this a few times and notice the shift in your body and mind. It's almost magical how such a small act can create such a profound effect. Curiously, the breath is both ordinary and extraordinary. It's something we take for granted, yet it holds the power to transform our state of being. By mastering your breath, you unlock a tool that's always with you, ready to bring calm and clarity whenever you need it. As we wrap up, remember this mastering your mind is the first step to mastering your life. Whether it's pausing before reacting, visualizing challenges ahead, or grounding yourself through your breath, each practice builds the resilience needed to thrive in a chaotic world. Small, consistent actions can lead to monumental shifts. So, which of these techniques will you start using today? If you've watched this far, drop A in the comments. It proves you're among the rare 0.01% who follow through on their growth journey. And if you're truly committed to transforming your life, make sure to join us by hitting that subscribe button. Together, we'll keep unlocking the tools to live a more powerful and peaceful life. Let's keep moving forward.